week uh, we're going to be talking about lesson 1.7 and lesson point seven and lesson point seven, lesson point eight, and if we have time, we'll do one point nine also. More properties of integer exponents. So now we're continuing on what we did before. So in this section, we're gonna talk about something called the zero exponent property. Okay, so what does it mean, the zero exponent? Now, for example, you have an example here. When you're dividing 3 to the power of 3, divide by 3 to the power of 3, you're actually getting, if you use the, the exponent rules, which is the, of, that, of that division, you're saying, well, I'm going to take one of the bases and I'm going to take the exponent and then subtract the exponent from each other. You can end up with the 3 to the power of 0. So 3 to the power of 0, anything, anything to the power of 0 is 1, which is logical because if you look at it this way, I mean, if I want to prove it to you, look at x to the power of 3 and x to the power of 3. So you have 3 times 3 times 3. And the same thing on the bottom is going to be 3 times 3 times 3. They're going to cancel each other. The answer is 1. So it's exactly matching with 3 to the power of 0. So that's a proof that 3 to the power of 0 is actually equals 1. So that's what we call the zero exponent property. Anything to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and and see uh, examples here. You, they're talking about negative 7 to the power of 0, 43 to the power of 0, 1 to the power of 0, 0.5 to the power of 0. So all of them, all of those ones will be, the answer will be 1. Now the second idea in this, in this section, negative exponent property. What does it mean? That means when you have a, a negative power. So how can we handle a negative power? For example, here you have an and 4 to the power of 3 divided by 4 to the power of 5. You end up when you subtract, you subtract 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So 4 to the power of negative 2, how do we handle it? We have to use the idea of negative exponent property. If you have a negative power, you do the reciprocal, and you put the, the base on the bottom where you change the negative power to a positive power. This is only a quick explanation. So for example, two to the power of negative two, or eight, sorry, eight to the power of negative two would be one over eight to the power of two. Now, the next section is, it is, will be about, which is 1.8, using of the power of 10 to estimate quantities, all right? So now, let's go ahead and have an idea what's gonna be in that section. You're gonna estimate a very large quantities. For example, you have 12, 126 million, how can we do them in, in exponents form? So that means you could round things to the power of, for example, here you see, you could see there's nine digits. So you could say multiplying 10 times to the power of nine, which gives you almost that. We would do an approximation, by the way, okay? So it's not an exact number, right? So it's an approximation. This is need to be actually done in class. I mean, here, uh, a quick talk about it, it's not gonna help a lot. So when you have a smaller number, which is below one, uh, also we could do a, a negative power uh, because it's gonna be below one. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Uh, here's finding uh, how many times as much, or, and also this is what's gonna be talked about in class. Um, now the last section that we might, might reach, which is 1.9, understanding scientific notations, which is related also to 1.8, 10 to the power, and that's a scientific notation, okay? So when we get to the 10 to the power, we're talking about scientific notations. Scientific is that, uh, will be expressed in that sense, a number times 10 to the power, and this number has to be between uh, one and 10, okay? Between one and 10, all right. Okay, talk to you later, bye-bye.